Uh, today, uh, we are talking about how uh, Go works with memory, starting from allocation process and uh, ending up with some analysis and development tips that uh, may help you in your development process. So, uh, I choose this topic because, as I think, work with memory is a core part of Go runtime, uh, which may affect the operation and performance of the application. And it is really useful to understand uh, what stands um, before the standard Go tools and uh, how much they can help you to develop uh, memory and CPU optimized solutions. For this reason, today we will discover how memory allocation and delegation works, uh, how we can analyze the heap growth and uh, what actions we can do to avoid problems with memory uh, allocation in our Go applications. So let's start from Go memory model. It has three base components uh, for working uh, with uh, memory model and uh, memory allocation. Uh, the allocator, uh, garbage collector, and uh, scavenger. Let's consider each one to understand better how they are working and help us uh, to use the OS memory. Uh, when we initialize new slides, for instance, uh, the first thing that Go will do is um, allocation of new memory. For this purpose, Go Runtime has specially allocator system. Uh, this system automatically controls uh, the memory allocation process and allows us to uh, do this in a very efficient way. Uh, the runtime do not use uh, the system calls to get new memory from operating system uh, because uh, it is very cost operation. Uh, it has actually a special memory division system that helps to avoid or have predictable memory fragmentation. Uh, the memory fragmentation, it is uh, some kind of situation when we allocate an object and uh, the memory that was requested for it was not fully used. Um, so, uh, the goes allocator. Uh, the main idea behind uh, this allocator uh, is TC malloc. Uh, it is uh, Google's custom compiler uh, algorithm uh, that is derived from uh, actual C malloc compiler designed with the idea to have cheap memory requests uh, by dividing uh, the memory into several levels of control. First of all, it is necessary to understand that uh, processes do not have the direct access to physical memory or to heap or something like that. Instead, it is uses uh, MMU uh, that you can see on the screen. Uh, it is a special uh, device on the computer uh, that calls memory management util. Uh, it uh, plays the role of translator of physical memory uh, addresses into virtual memory addresses. When the process is out of memory, uh, the program can use uh, either syscalls to get more or use some custom allocators like uh, cmalloc or like tcmalloc. Uh, for that reason, Google designed uh, the tcmalloc, a compiler that allows to have uh, optimized memory fragmentation and uh, optimized memory requesting processes from operating system. And uh, Go uh, uses the same idea in its own runtime com uh, runtime allocator. Uh, its work uh, is based on memory separation uh, by different levels. Uh, the first one that we normally called heap uh, is organized, um, is actually organized virtual memory space. Uh, by uh, some kind of uh, parts, special memory parts called arenas. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is the base uh, features of Go allocator. And um, let's move on to arena. The heap arena um, 
is like a special um, bunch of memory. Um, and uh, when the runtime, uh, when the ghost runtime doesn't have free memory, it requests an entire arena from the system uh, at once. And it has platform dependent size, uh, but normally uh, it is uh, 64 megabytes. Uh, this kind of allocations reduces the number of system calls and uh, context switches. Inside the arena, uh, we can uh, have some complex structure. Uh, it consists of uh, address data, uh, memory spans data, M span uh, structure, uh, the second field uh, inside the struct. Uh, and uh, some data about mem memory pages that are uh, actually the part of uh, this virtual memory that we already have seen. Um, the arena memory is divided into eight uh, kilobytes pages and uh, already the pages are combined into spans of uh, various sizes. Uh, from 8 to 80 kilobytes. So each span acts uh, like a pool of memory uh, for objects of a certain size classes. Uh, in Go runtime, uh, there existed 67 uh, classes of certain lands. Uh, here I have a table um, that I found from the runtime uh, says classes.go file um, about span class information, what size uh, they actually got and uh, what level of fragmentation they can have, uh, what uh, level of waste during the fragmentation and uh, what like possible uh, alignment uh, can be reached during struct allocation. Um, in Go, there, we, there exists some kind of uh, a function that can allow to allocate uh, new objects of some size. And uh, during this process, the arena span uh, divisions can be used for object allocation. If there will be no left space uh, in arena, uh, the new one will be requested. Uh, if there is a space, uh, we will, the go runtime will use um, just um, a few of these spans uh, for particular uh, size of the object. So allocated memory should be reused or deallocated. And for this reason, Go has another runtime component called uh, garbage collector. Um, it has uh, some various uh, stages or phases. Um, we will talk about uh, the three uh, base of them. Uh, it, it is mark setup, uh, marking, and mark termination. So during mark setup phase, uh, garbage collector um, just stops uh, all the go routines to uh, prevent uh, new memory allocations. After that, GC starts uh, marking process and uh, mm, it just marks the memory that can be deallocated. During this process, um, it works on 25% of available CPU and can uh, and uh, garbage collector can actually delegate the work to other uh, processors, P, uh, from Go runtime to finish the process faster. And this process called uh, Mark Assist. Uh, the last phase of uh, garbage collection is Mark Termination, when garbage collector deallocates memory and starts the Go routine uh, that were stopped. These three phases um, runtime um, of runtime to is actually used to deallocate memory. Uh, but there is uh, another component that returns this memory back from virtual space uh, to the operating system. It called scavenger and uh, it releases free and uh, unused pages uh, unused pages from um, virtual space uh, to the operating system. It just um, 
like gets uh, like allocate, allocator gets memory from the operating system. This space may be unused, and there is a way to tell operating system that it could be taken back. This process uh, called scavenging. Uh, the scavengering Go has two running forms. Uh, the first one is background, uh, and another one is heap grows. For a long time in Go, until the uh, 11th version, if I'm not mistaken, scavenger was a process that uh, runs every 2.5 minutes and just three pages from spans. Uh, this one uh, is called background scavenger. And another one was introduced uh, starting from 12th version. Of the, uh, and this type of scavenger runs on intensive heap grows and uh, checks uh, what pages can be free. So uh, for now, we discovered the process of uh, memory management uh, on runtime level. And uh, the main idea is that we can analyze it. So let's uh, discover some standard Go tools that will help to track possible memory and uh, CPU problems. And the first one is uh, very simple. Uh, this is benchmark. You can use benchmarks with additional heap output statistics. To do that, you can just simply add uh, report allocs function and get uh, some additional information about heap allocations per operation. Uh, this simple approach will help you to monitor the isolated memory or CPU growth. If the number of allocations is high or has to be optimized, like we have got uh, this example, one allocation per operation, uh, we can use more detailed tools for uh, allocation investigation. And uh, this is uh, profiling. So uh, we are talking about memory. So the first one will be memory profiler. It is possible to run uh, the profiler both in test mode and uh, in like uh, separate, um, separate, like running the separate server by just importing the package uh, per prof. Uh, we will discuss uh, the, um, the profiling inside uh, the tests. Um, so it is possible to run uh, memory profiling in test mode that uh, I will have in these examples, but you can also do uh, all these things, as I said, by using pprof. By using this uh, tool, uh, you can run server and uh, see the profiler results. Uh, with a call stack and uh, heap memory usage. Um, also, it is possible to view the top allocation components uh, and uh, the source code analysis where it is possible to get line by line information about uh, intensive uh, memory allocations. So another possible solution for analyzing heap usage can be CPU profiling. Uh, to run it in testing mode, uh, we can add a CPU profile flag uh, with out file name. And uh, then just uh, run go to the prof tool to uh, start the HTTP server and see the results that we have uh, on our screens. Um, so uh, what we can uh, have here, uh, the CPU profiling can show us the possible components that use, uh, that intensively use uh, Go allocator uh, or GC functionality. And uh, this uh, stuff we can see on the picture from the right, uh, where our program just uh, intensively uses a runtime system stack, uh, some GC uh, functionality and uh, allocating on the M heap. Uh, there can be some cases when even profilers will not give us the full information that we need uh, about memory usage. And in such cases, it is possible to use uh, runtime mem stats. So it is uh, some kind of runtime statistics. Uh, in ca it can be gathered uh, 
uh, with uh, the usage of the function read web stats that you can see uh, from the right. Uh, it calls uh, the garbage collectors functionality uh, stop the world and just uh, starts the runtime information about uh, all available allocations. Um, so it uh, the, all this data can be uh, gathered by uh, memstats struct and uh, it uh, actually contains a lot of uh, information that we can use uh, for optimization or investigation of memory leaks uh, here i have a piece of code that we that will show the size of allocated objects and uh, obtained memory from operating system. Um, another non-trivial tool uh, for heap allocation investigation um, can be escape analysis. It can help you to realize when and uh, why some variables was allocated on heap, what functions are actually inlined can be inlined uh, during the compile time and what functions um, are not inlined in, and why. Uh, because uh, um, during the compile time, the Go um, search uh, estimates the complexity of the function. And in this way, uh, by using escape analysis, we can also optimize uh, these parts of code. Um, so escape analysis is one of the phases of the Go compiler that uh, analyzes the code and determines what variables may escape to heap at compile time from stack. Uh, to make uh, escape analysis, you should build or run your code with just simply uh, adding GC flags with one minus M option. Uh, and uh, on the example here, we have a piece of code uh, with simple allocation that normally should left on stack uh, as we just uh, initialized a simple struct and that's it. Uh, but uh, during escape analysis, uh, we realized that print line uh, makes uh, variable to escape on heap. And uh, um, for detailed uh, analysis, you can also use more than one minus M flag. And uh, then you will get more information as you can see on the below picture from the right. We can have uh, a lot of more additional information. If we will use uh, three and more flags, uh, we can even uh, use some assembler code. There is uh, some detailed ex uh, explanation of uh, how our allocations can escape to him. So uh, there are some situations that may be concerned with uh, garbage collector pressure. And uh, you can follow this problem in two ways, either to use go trace uh, that will show the garbage collector runs or use uh, GC trace tool uh, that we will discuss now. So GC trace tool gives uh, a lot of information about garbage collector, um, the duration of each uh, of its states and how much memory was managed by garbage collector. This tool can help to tune uh, or optimize garbage collector and uh, investigate possible memory leaks. Uh, on the first, on the first line uh, of this picture, we can see the output of uh, GC trace tool. Um, and uh, we can see uh, below the details, uh, the detailed transcription of the trace. Uh, so it is possible to just add uh, go debug environment variable with uh, GC trace one option uh, with solid like general uh, go build, uh, go, go run, um, go run command. And uh, we will get uh, the garbage collector traces uh, in such way. Uh, here we can find some information about uh, time of uh, each 
uh, stage of uh, collection and uh, some useful information about heap growth uh, when like collection started, when it finishes um, and stuff like that. Uh, it uh, can be useful for management possible memory leaks. So uh, for now, uh, we discussed how the memory model works, how we can use standard Go tools for analyzing possible memory problems. And uh, now let's move on to some tips uh, that will help you to avoid some of these problems. So the first one, uh is it is better to avoid uh unnecessary string and byte allocations as they are treated as dynamical size data and uh, they are both stored on heap uh, so for string operations uh it is better to use uh, string buffer or string builder because um, during each concatenation operation uh, we just uh, can allocate the, the new and new uh, strings that will be stored on heap. Here I have a small uh, example of code uh, that creates a map with 1 million strings, uh, keys, the, uh, string keys and int keys uh, in simple map. And uh, also here uh, from the top, I have um, used the heap profiler the custom package uh, that I will show you later. Um, and if we see both of them uh, and compare the results, uh, we realize that uh, int, uh, int key map uh, was better by 44%. Uh, so uh, if it is unnecessary, the, if it is unnecessary to use strings, do not use strings. Uh, for map uh, key type or for anything like this, because we can um, have a lot of memory optimization um, if we will not use them. Uh, if you have uh, some portion of big array, array not slice, uh, so we will have like static size uh, in some function, uh, and it should be used. To and for instance, our array should be used in another function, like uh, we want to just print uh, print our array, and that's all. So uh, what can happen in this case? Uh, we will get the stack overflow uh, error because of the array size, uh, as uh, it was already allocated uh, on stack. And uh, we try to put uh, like the, the new data um, to that place. And uh, it will be better uh, to use the pointer as its size will be only eight bytes. So we just uh, get our uh, big array, uh, create a function that receives the, this data by pointer and uh, everything will work fine, our, our code. Uh, will normally run. Um, so one of most uh, powerful ways to optimize the memory allocation is uh, to use sync pool. Pool's purpose is to cache uh, allocated items for later reuse, uh, relieving pre some pressure on the GC. So um, here I have some small example with allocations of the pointer data type. Uh, we have like key with hash uh, and with like simple flag. And uh, we have uh, example function that uh, will have 1 million iterations and just uh, allocate this key, do some, some work and uh, that's all. So we will not use this allocated object and uh, it will, uh, it, it have to be uh, delocated by garbage collector. But uh, by using this in pool, we can uh, simply put uh, this key uh, inside of it and uh, just reuse it. And uh, as a result, we can, uh, we can get the um, 
allocation six time uh, less memory with simple uh, than without it. So this is a good practice to reuse objects uh, if it is possible. Um, so another advice is to align tracks. Uh, it can save lo a lot of memory and help to avoid some memory fragmentation. In this example, we uh, have two the same tracks, but one is of size 12, one is of size uh, 8. And um, the size 8 we have got after simple rearranging the fields of the tract. So if we uh, will remember uh, this rule and will remember the uh, rules of uh, span classes, then uh, we can like um, avoid uh, some additional memory fragmentation. So uh, also it is uh, a good practice to um, have some automatic like tools uh, to do the aligning. Uh, the first one, uh, very simple, is to just use linter rule. Um, the second one, uh, we can use uh, some additional uh, third party library, um, like, for instance, Helligo, and uh, have uh, like pretty visualization of uh, how our struct allocates, what size it has and uh, what should be rearranged. So, uh, memory limiter. Uh, starting from the new version of uh, Go 1.19, the runtime includes support for heap memory limitation. It can help you to avoid uh, the killing uh, of your application by, by operating system uh, to release some resources. So uh, you can just use uh, memory limit by either uh, environment variable, go mem limit, uh, that is set it uh, in just uh, number and uh, value of um, memory to be set it as max size of the heap to be allocated for our Go application, or we can uh, change this uh, value in runtime uh, by using the function set memory limit. Uh, it uh, helps to uh, better utilize the available memory resources and uh, more aggressively return them to the operation uh, to the operation system. It can be used as um, like additional additional tip to uh, all of the following that uh, I have mentioned before. And uh, to sum up, uh, all the topics that we've discussed, um, Go has incredible environment to analyze the quality of your code. Uh, so um, in order to make all these tips and information usable for you. I created a special GitHub repository uh, where you can uh, use and uh, follow all these simple rules to make your applications better. So thanks for your attention. And uh, if you have some questions, you can ask me. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of uh, them is, does Go offer tools for off-heap allocations to allocate memory out uh, in areas that are not managed by garbage collection, garbage collection uh, collector? Um, do you mean the stack, for instance? No, no, no. Um, native uh, memory that is not managed by garbage collector. It's not stack. Uh, I mean, some um, that memory may be used for some giant uh, memory structures that I don't want um, uh, garbage collector to worry about. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so, um, 
like if I understand your question, uh, if we, for instance, it it would be it would be better if, uh, if we uh, have like a big struct and uh, uh, the garbage collector will not try to collect uh, all the data from it. Yeah. Yes, I I want some area of memory to be invisible for gar garbage collector at all. Mm -hmm. But I still want to have a point or two to work with it. Mm, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, I do not uh, know and heard some standard tools from Go library to just uh, avoid it. But uh, I know that uh, in some special cases, uh, some big companies uh, just uh, disable the garbage collector and uh, have uh, some good results uh, in memory and CPU uh, optimization. And uh, maybe it uh, will be a good option for some kind of project. Um, and um, especially when we have the set memory limiter uh, function from the Go 119, uh, because uh, it can like, um, run uh, without garbage collector and free try to free some memory from virtual space and uh, send it back to operating system well and small comment i guess like go is a memory safe language and if you want to allocate something uh, that garbage collector doesn't see it will be unsafe I guess so. Yes, the only way is to disable garbage collector, as far as I know. So also on top of that, there was uh, there were some proposal regarding some ignore flex for the garbage collection. So for example, you can uh, compose your struct and uh, push some like tags like garbage collector ignore this struct something like that but those proposals as far as i know they were just closed and uh, they didn't consider into implementing that okay thank you and another question um are memory leaks possible in Go and mm -hmm. how to detect them? Mm -hmm. uh, that is a good question. Yeah, uh, they are possible. Uh, the simple uh, like examples uh, when we uh, use, uh, for instance, Go routine uh, as uh, the embedded function inside another function, like, like closure. And uh, we can pass some parameters uh, of some like type and uh, they can leak. Uh, the more uh, simple example is uh, when we use like ticker and uh, we forget to stop it. Uh, or a very, very popular like problem with context uh, in uh, with the work with gRPC. Uh, that is 100% problem when we like um, start the request and just forget to to cancel the context um, or send some signal about uh, the request and then we uh, can actually have a memory leak. Uh, also, uh, it can easily happen if uh, we uh, we are working with slices. And uh, we uh, pass slice data from like uh, one function to another one uh, that is slice, uh, like references, referencing data type. And uh, then we uh, do some operation with um, like this, um, like double, a double dot uh, operator to just cut off uh, the part of the slice. And in this case, uh, also we can like have a memory leak. Uh, how to detect it? So uh, we have, um, we have 
um, the GC trace uh, tool uh, with some uh, heap memory information that uh, like was started, was finished uh, after our collection. So we can like uh, follow uh, this information in order to like um, analyze uh, the possible leak. And uh, the 100% tool uh, is runtime statistics because uh, it has uh, the number, the total number of allocations as that was done and the total number of deallocations that was done. And we can just uh, have the minus operation between these two numbers and uh, have the result if we uh, have some possible memory leaks or not. Okay, so these tools allow to notice if memory leak exists in a program, right? Yeah. yeah. Do they help to find the exact function or line where it happens? Mm. Mm, yeah. For example, I have some program that uh, was created by uh, external developer and I see that uh, it consumes memory uh, uncontrollably and I want to find the memory leak and fix it. Do mm -hmm. the tools that you presented help me to do that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we can like uh, see the graph on our server, uh, whether the memory allocation goes up or goes down. Uh, the second step, uh, I, I guess, uh, will be the runtime statistics. Uh, just uh, set uh, set some kind of uh, go routine uh, that will run one per second or one once per some period of time, and uh, we just uh, have uh, some uh, differences between memory allocation. Uh, and uh, if there exists, yeah. Uh, we have some memory leak. Then we can um, go to memory profiler uh, that will have uh, some additional information about the components, the stack, uh, the calling stack, uh, and to which components consume a lot of data. And that's, uh, that will be the key. Uh, that's it. So for instance, we, we, we say that line 36 uh, has a lot of uh, additional allocations. So probably um, it can uh, be our problem. So I will uh, I will suggest to think in this way. Great, thank you. Maybe just like just to be clear, maybe this is my opinion. It will not show you like exact memory leak, like you have yeah. memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a, so, it is probably. Yes. Probably, yeah. It will give it will give you some inputs that you need to analyze. So, for example, you will see the number of allocations. Uh, you will see the number of allocated, uh, sorry, allocated volume that you have, and also you can collect other data. And based on that data, you can just do some investigation and found out memory leaks. But like from production point of view, basically, in, if you see that your memory consumption is growing on, growing up, like uh, uh, with some significant speed or something like that, definitely there will be some memory leak. This could be just a bit design. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. <laughs> I believe, yeah, memory leak is a huge topic and it could be discussed like separately or like with a deep and good understanding. Any other questions?